Today we're diving deep into a question a lot of growth stock enthusiasts are asking, is NOBL the ultimate ETF for you? NOBL, the iShares S&P 500 growth ETF, tracks a basket of large cap companies poised for explosive growth. Sounds great, right? But before you jump in, there are some hidden risks and some interesting strategies to consider. We'll crack open NOBL, explore how it stacks up against individual stock picking, and see if a small cap growth buddy might be the missing puzzle piece for your portfolio. So buckle up, growth seekers, because in the next 30 seconds, we'll reveal whether NOBL is a long-term champion or a short-term hype machine. Stay tuned. How closely does NOBL's objective of tracking the S&P 500 growth index? NOBL, or the iShares S&P 500 growth ETF, aims to track the performance of the S&P 500 growth index. This index, developed by S&P Dow Jones Indices, is designed to capture the performance of the largest growth companies within the S&P 500. However, it's important to understand that tracking an index isn't always perfect, and NOBL might exhibit some deviations from the index it follows. Here's a breakdown of how closely NOBL tracks the S&P 500 growth index. Tracking Methodology Index Composition The S&P 500 Growth Index uses specific criteria to select companies from the S&P 500. These criteria typically focus on factors like earnings growth, sales momentum, and investment analyst growth expectations. NOBL replicates this selection process by holding the same constituents as the index, in proportion to their weighting within the index. Performance Deviation Expense ratio, NOBL, like any ETF, incurs fees to cover administrative and operational costs. The expense ratio of NOBL is currently around 0.35%. This means the ETF's returns will be slightly lower than the S&P 500 growth index by this amount. Tracking differences, in rare instances, there may be minor tracking differences due to factors like Liquidity. If there's limited liquidity for a specific stock in the index, an OBL might hold a slightly different amount to ensure efficient trading. Dividends. The S&P 500 growth index assumes reinvestment of dividends, whereas an OBL might have a slight delay in reinvesting dividends received. Cash drag. An OBL holds a small amount of cash to cover daily operations. This cash portion doesn't generate returns, unlike the underlying stocks, causing a minor drag on performance. Overall Tracking Despite these potential deviations, NOBL generally tracks the S&P 500 growth index very closely. The expense ratio is relatively low, and liquidity issues or dividend reinvestment delays are typically minimal. Therefore, for most purposes, you can expect an OBL's performance to closely mirror that of the underlying index. Is the expense ratio of an OBL competitive compared to other S&P 500 growth ETFs or actively managed growth funds? Here's an in-depth analysis of an OBL's expense ratio compared to other S&P 500 growth ETFs and actively managed growth funds. NOBL's Expense Ratio Current Rate NOBL currently has an expense ratio of around 0.35%. This expense ratio covers the fees associated with managing the ETF, including Fund Administration Costs Index Licensing Fees Market Data Subscriptions Portfolio Security Lending Activities, if applicable Comparison with S&P 500 Growth ETFs Competitiveness With an expense ratio of 0.35%, an OBL falls within the average range for S&P 500 Growth ETFs. Here's a breakdown. Lower expense ratio options Several S&P 500 Growth ETFs charge expense ratios lower than 0.35%. 
For example, the SPDR S&P 500 Growth ETF, SPYG, has an expense ratio of 0.06% and the Vanguard S&P 500 Growth ETF, VOOG, has an expense ratio of 0.08%. These lower cost options can be attractive for investors seeking to maximize returns. Higher expense ratio options. There are also S&P 500 growth ETFs with expense ratios exceeding 0.35%. These might offer additional features like ESG screening or currency hedging, which can justify the higher cost. Comparison with actively managed growth funds. Expense ratio range. Actively managed growth funds typically have higher expense ratios compared to ETFs. Their expense ratios can range from 1% to 2% or even higher. These fees cover the salaries of portfolio managers, analysts, and research teams who actively research and select stocks for the fund. Factors to consider when choosing. Investment objective. If your primary goal is to track the S&P 500 growth index with minimal fees, then a lower cost S&P 500 growth ETF like SPYG or VOOG might be a better choice than NOBL. Features versus fees. Some S&P 500 growth ETFs with slightly higher expense ratios might offer additional features like tax efficiency or specific sector weighting that could be valuable depending on your investment goals. Potential for outperformance, actively managed growth funds, despite their higher fees, can outperform the market if the fund manager consistently selects stocks that outperform the S&P 500 growth index. However, achieving consistent outperformance is challenging, and past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. How liquid is NOBL compared to other growth ETFs? Here's an in-depth explanation of NOBL's liquidity compared to other growth ETFs. Liquidity Fundamentals Trading Volume Liquidity refers to the ease with which an asset can be bought or sold at a fair price. A highly liquid asset has a high trading volume, meaning a large number of shares are traded daily. NOBL being an ETF tracking a popular index, S&P 500 growth, generally enjoys high liquidity. Order book depth, another measure of liquidity, is the order book depth. This refers to the number of buy and sell orders at different price points. A deep order book indicates sufficient interest on both sides, buy and sell, to facilitate smooth execution of trades. NOBL's liquidity. Large asset base, NOBL has a large asset base, total market value of all outstanding shares, currently exceeding $60 billion. This large size attracts institutional investors and market makers, which helps maintain high liquidity. Underlying holdings, since NOBL tracks the S&P 500 growth index, its holdings are generally large cap growth companies that are themselves highly liquid. This translates to easier buying and selling of NOBL shares. Comparison with other growth ETFs Broad market growth ETFs, large cap growth ETFs like NOBL tend to be more liquid compared to small cap or niche growth ETFs. This is because small cap growth companies typically have lower trading volumes and smaller market capitalizations. Actively managed growth funds while actively managed growth funds might invest in some highly liquid large-cap stocks, they can also hold smaller companies or less liquid assets. This can make them less liquid compared to ETFs like NOBL. Potential Impact of Liquidity Transaction Costs Highly liquid ETFs like NOBL typically have lower bid-ask spreads, the difference between the highest buy offer and the lowest sell offer. This translates to lower transaction costs when buying or selling shares. Order execution. High liquidity allows for faster and more efficient order execution, minimizing the risk of significant price deviations from the intended price. 
What is the volatility of NOBL compared to the broader market or other growth ETFs? Here's an in-depth explanation of NOBL's volatility compared to the broader market and other growth ETFs. Understanding Volatility 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 refers to the degree of variation of a security's price over time. A more volatile investment experiences larger price swings, both up and down, compared to a less volatile one. NOBL's Volatility Growth Stocks By nature, growth stocks tend to be more volatile than the broader market. This is because their future earnings potential is based on future expectations, which can be more uncertain than the earnings of established companies. NOBL as it focuses on growth stocks, inherits some of this inherent volatility. Index diversification, however, NOBL benefits from diversification across multiple growth companies within the S&P 500 Growth Index. This diversification helps to reduce volatility compared to holding individual growth stocks. Comparison with the broader market S&P 500 the S&P 500 is a commonly used benchmark for the overall stock market. Historically, the S&P 500 has exhibited moderate volatility. We can expect an OBL to be somewhat more volatile than the S&P 500 due to its focus on growth stocks. Comparison with other growth ETFs Volatility measures There are several ways to measure volatility. Two common ones are standard deviation and beta. Standard deviation, this measures the historical dispersion of a security's returns around its average return. A higher standard deviation indicates greater volatility. Beta, this measures the volatility of an investment relative to the broader market, typically the S&P 500. A beta of 1 indicates that the investment's volatility is expected to match the market's volatility. A beta greater than 1 suggests higher volatility, and a beta less than 1 suggests lower volatility. Variations within growth ETFs Volatility can also differ among growth ETFs depending on several factors. Index Composition the specific growth stocks included in the underlying index can impact volatility. Some growth indexes might be more concentrated in specific sectors or have stricter growth criteria, leading to potentially higher volatility. Investment Strategy Some growth ETFs might employ additional strategies, like leverage or quality weighting, which can further influence their volatility profile. How concentrated are NOBL's holdings in terms of sector or individual companies? Here's an in-depth explanation of how concentrated NOBL's holdings are in terms of sector and individual companies. Concentration Risks Sector Concentration NOBL tracks the S&P 500 Growth Index, which weights companies based on a combination of factors like market capitalization, growth rate, and profitability. However, this methodology can lead to some concentration in certain sectors that are typically associated with growth, like technology or healthcare. Individual Company Concentration The S&P 500 Growth Index typically holds around 300 companies. While this provides diversification, the top holdings can still represent a significant portion of the overall portfolio, potentially increasing concentration risk. NOBL's Concentration Sector Weighting While the exact sector allocation can fluctuate, technology and healthcare sectors tend to be the most prominent holdings within NOBL, often exceeding 40% of the total weight. This implies greater exposure to these sectors' performance compared to a broader market ETF. Top Holdings The top 10 holdings in NOBL can represent a significant portion around 25 to 30 percent, of the total portfolio value. This means the performance of a few companies can have a larger impact on NOBL's overall performance. Comparison with other investments Broader market ETFs, compared to a broad market ETF like SPY, tracks the S&P 500, 
NOBL exhibits higher concentration in terms of both sector and individual companies. This can lead to potentially higher volatility and greater risk if specific sectors or companies underperform. Actively managed growth funds Actively managed growth funds can also exhibit concentration, but the degree can vary depending on the fund manager's strategy. Some actively managed funds might be even more concentrated in specific sectors or individual companies than NOBL. Impact of Concentration Volatility Concentration in sectors or individual companies can make NOBL more susceptible to volatility swings within those sectors or companies. For example, a downturn in the technology sector could disproportionately impact NOBL's performance. Performance If the concentrated sectors or companies outperform the broader market, NOBL can potentially generate higher returns. However, the converse is also true. Does NOBL's focus on growth stocks expose me to potential overvaluation risks compared to a more balanced ETF? Absolutely, NOBL's focus on growth stocks does expose you to potential overvaluation risks compared to a more balanced ETF. Here's a detailed explanation. Growth stocks versus value stocks. Growth stocks, these companies are expected to experience above-average earnings growth in the future. Investors are willing to pay a premium for this potential which can lead to their stock prices becoming more expensive relative to their underlying fundamentals, earnings, book value. Overvaluation Risks Market Correction If future earnings growth for growth stocks falls short of expectations, a market correction could occur as investors adjust stock prices downward. This could lead to significant losses for NOBL, especially if the growth stocks it holds are already overvalued. Economic downturn. During economic downturns, growth stocks tend to underperform compared to value stocks or more defensive assets. This is because their future earnings potential becomes more uncertain in a weaker economic environment. NOBL vs. Balanced ETFs. Balanced ETFs. These ETFs aim to provide diversification across asset classes, typically including a mix of stocks and bonds. They often allocate a portion to value stocks, which can offer some downside protection during market corrections. Lower Potential Returns While balanced ETFs offer potentially lower volatility and reduced overvaluation risk, they may also come with lower potential returns compared to NOBL, especially during strong bull markets when growth stocks tend to outperform. Risk Tolerance and Investment Horizon Risk tolerance. If you have a lower risk tolerance and are uncomfortable with potential significant losses due to overvaluation, a more balanced ETF might be a better option. Investment horizon. For long-term investors, short-term overvaluation risks might be less concerning, as growth stocks have the potential to recover and deliver strong returns over the long term. Strategies to mitigate risk. Asset allocation. Consider including a combination of NOBL and a balanced ETF in your portfolio to achieve a balance between growth potential and risk mitigation. Value investing. Allocate a portion of your portfolio to value stocks or value ETFs to potentially hedge against overvaluation in the growth sector. Active management. If you have the knowledge and risk tolerance, consider incorporating actively managed funds that employ a combination of growth and value strategies. However, remember that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results, and these funds come with higher fees. Does NOBL hold any underlying assets denominated in foreign currencies, and how does this exposure affect its overall risk profile? NOBL, the iShares S&P 500 Growth ETF, generally does not hold any underlying assets denominated in foreign currencies. Here's a breakdown of why and how this currency exposure affects its risk profile. Underlying Holdings Focus on U.S. Companies NOBL tracks the S&P 500 Growth Index 
which consists of large cap growth companies listed on U.S. stock exchanges. These companies primarily generate their revenue and earnings in U.S. dollars. Minimal foreign currency exposure Exceptions There might be rare instances where a company in the S&P 500 growth index has a significant portion of its operations or revenue generation outside the U.S. In such cases, the company might hold some assets or liabilities denominated in foreign currencies. However, the overall exposure to foreign currencies within NOBL is typically negligible. Impact on Risk Profile Reduced Currency Fluctuation Risk By holding primarily U.S.-listed companies with limited foreign currency exposure, NOBL avoids the risk of fluctuations in foreign exchange rates impacting its overall portfolio value. This can be particularly beneficial during periods of currency volatility or weakness in the U.S. dollar. Comparison with International ETFs Increased risk, ETFs that invest in international stocks or emerging markets often have significant exposure to foreign currencies. Fluctuations in these currencies can cause the value of the ETF to deviate from its underlying holdings performance. This adds an additional layer of risk to consider. Does the underlying index selection process for NOBL prioritize specific growth factors like momentum, earnings, or PE ratios? The underlying index selection process for NOBL, the S, and P500 growth index prioritizes a combination of growth factors, not solely focusing on one metric. Here's a breakdown of the factors considered. Multiple growth factors. Earnings growth. The index methodology emphasizes companies with a history of strong and sustainable earnings growth, often looking at past and projected earnings growth rates. Sales momentum. Companies with consistent and accelerating revenue growth are also favored. This indicates the company's ability to expand its market share and increase profitability. Quality and profitability. The index may also consider factors like return on equity, ROE, return on invested capital, ROIC, and profit margins to assess the company's overall financial health and efficiency in generating profits. Market Capitalization The S&P 500 Growth Index focuses on large-cap growth companies. While not a direct growth factor, Market capitalization serves as a liquidity screen and ensures the index constituents are large and established companies. Index Construction Methodology Quantitative Screens The S&P Dow Jones Indices uses a set of quantitative screens to evaluate companies within the S&P 500. These screens incorporate the factors mentioned above and assign scores based on each company's performance in these areas. Free Float Adjusted Market Capitalization The index considers the company's free float market capitalization, the portion of shares readily available for trading, when assigning a weight within the index. Periodic Rebalancing The S&P 500 Growth Index is rebalanced quarterly to ensure the holdings continue to reflect the growth characteristics and maintain desired sector weightings. P.E. Ratio as a Consideration Indirect role. While the P.E. ratio, price-to-earnings ratio, isn't explicitly used as a selection criterion, it can be indirectly captured through the focus on earnings growth. Companies with high future earnings growth expectations often trade at higher P.E. ratios. However, the index methodology doesn't solely rely on P.E. ratios, which can be susceptible to manipulation or distortion due to accounting practices. How often does the S&P 500 growth index rebalance, and could this lead to short-term volatility for NOBL? The S&P 500 growth index rebalances quarterly, typically after the close of trading on the third Friday of March, June, September, and December. This rebalancing process can lead to short-term volatility for NOBL, the iShares S&P 500 growth ETF that tracks the index but the impact is usually minimal. Here's a breakdown of why. Rebalancing process. 
maintaining index composition, rebalancing ensures the S&P 500 growth index reflects the desired characteristics of large-cap growth companies. During rebalancing, the index provider might Add new companies that meet the growth criteria and have sufficient market capitalization. Remove companies that no longer meet the growth criteria or have fallen below a certain market capitalization threshold. Adjust the weightings of existing companies within the index based on their current market capitalization and growth prospects. Impact on NOBL Portfolio Adjustments to mirror the changes in the S&P 500 growth index, NOBL needs to buy or sell underlying securities. This buying and selling activity can cause short-term fluctuations in NOBL's price, especially if there are significant changes to the index composition. Mitigating Volatility Efficiency of ETF Structure ETFs are typically designed to be creation and redemption units, allowing authorized participants, large institutions, to create or redeem large blocks of ETF shares in exchange for underlying basket of securities. This creation and redemption process helps NOBL track the index efficiently and minimize tracking errors. Gradual Adjustments Rebalancing typically involves adding or removing companies gradually, which helps to spread out the buying and selling activity and reduce the potential impact on NOBL's price. Overall Impact While rebalancing can cause some short-term volatility for NOBL, the impact is usually minimal and shouldn't significantly affect the ETF's long-term performance. Here's why. Focus on long-term growth. NOBL is designed for long-term investors seeking exposure to the growth potential of large-cap U.S. companies. Short-term fluctuations around rebalancing events are less relevant for this investment strategy. Transparency of Rebalancing Schedule The rebalancing schedule is publicly known, allowing investors to be aware of potential periods of higher volatility. Investor Considerations Short-term investors, if you're a short-term investor concerned about daily price fluctuations, an OBL might not be the most suitable investment. Consider alternative options with lower volatility. Long-term investors, for long-term investors focused on capturing the growth potential of the U.S. growth stock market, short-term rebalancing volatility shouldn't be a major concern. Are there alternative S&P 500 growth ETFs with lower expense ratios or different weighting methodologies? Yes, there are several alternative S&P 500 growth ETFs with lower expense ratios or different weighting methodologies compared to NOBL, iShares S&P 500 growth ETF. Here's a breakdown of the options. Lower expense ratio ETFs. SPDR S&P 500 Growth ETF, SPYG, this ETF tracks the S&P 500 Growth Index just like NOBL, but with a significantly lower expense ratio of around 0.06%. This can lead to slightly higher returns for investors over the long term due to the lower fees. Vanguard S&P 500 Growth ETF VOOG This ETF also tracks the S&P 500 growth index and boasts a low expense ratio of around 0.08%. Like SPYG, it offers a cost-effective way to access growth stocks within the S&P 500. Different Weighting Methodologies Invesco S&P 500 Momentum Tilt ETF, MOM, this ETF focuses on momentum investing which involves overweighting stocks with strong recent price appreciation. While it uses the S&P 500 as its starting universe, it applies a momentum tilt to the weighting methodology, potentially leading to a different composition compared to NOBL. Franklin FTSE Russell U.S. Growth Leaders Index ETF, FKLG, this ETF tracks the FTSE Russell U.S. Growth Leaders Index which selects companies based on a combination of factors like sales growth, profitability, and investment. This index might have some overlap with the S&P 500 growth index, 
but the specific weighting methodology and selection criteria can lead to a different portfolio composition. Would a combination of sector-specific growth ETFs offer more targeted exposure compared to the broad diversification of NOBL? Yes, a combination of sector-specific growth ETFs could offer more targeted exposure compared to the broad diversification of NOBL, iShares S and P500 growth ETF. Here's a breakdown of the pros and cons of each approach. NOBL's broad diversification. Pros. Reduced risk, diversification across multiple sectors within the S&P 500 growth index helps mitigate the risk of underperformance in any single sector. Convenience, a single ETF provides exposure to a basket of growth stocks, simplifying portfolio management. Cons, limited control, you don't have direct control over the sector allocation within NOBL. Potential for underperformance, if certain sectors favored by NOBL underperform, the overall ETF's returns could be lower. Sector-specific growth ETFs Pros Targeted exposure, you can choose ETFs focused on specific growth sectors you believe have high potential, like technology, healthcare, or consumer discretionary. Potential for higher returns if your chosen sectors outperform the broader market, a basket of sector-specific ETFs could generate higher returns than NOBL. Cons Increased risk, concentration in a single sector can magnify both gains and losses. Higher management, researching and selecting multiple ETFs requires more effort and ongoing monitoring. Potential for overlap some companies might be included in multiple sector-specific ETFs, reducing overall diversification. Does the diversification benefit of NOBL outweigh the potential for higher returns through individual stock selection? Whether the diversification benefit of NOBL outweighs the potential for higher returns through individual stock selection depends on several factors, and there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Here's a breakdown of the pros and cons of each approach. Diversification with NOBL Pros Reduced risk, NOBL spreads your investment across multiple growth companies, mitigating the risk of significant losses if any individual company performs poorly. Convenience Investing in a single ETF simplifies portfolio management and eliminates the need for in-depth research on individual stocks. Lower costs, NOBL's expense ratio is typically lower than the combined fees associated with purchasing and managing a portfolio of individual stocks. Cons Tapped potential returns, NOBL's performance is tied to the S&P 500 growth index. You can't outperform the index unless you actively manage the holdings. Limited control you don't have control over the specific companies held within NOBL and their weightings. Individual Stock Selection Pros Potentially higher returns. By carefully selecting high-growth stocks with strong fundamentals, you could potentially outperform the market and NOBL. Greater control. You have complete control over which stocks to buy, sell, and hold within your portfolio. Customization, you can tailor your portfolio to align with your specific investment goals and risk tolerance. Cons Increased risk, investing in individual stocks carries a higher risk of significant losses compared to a diversified ETF. Time commitment, thorough research and analysis are required to select promising individual stocks and monitor their performance. Higher costs Trading commissions and fees associated with individual stock purchases can add up over time. Choosing the right approach Investment knowledge and experience Individual stock selection requires a strong understanding of financial markets, company analysis, and risk management. If you lack this knowledge, an OBL might be a safer choice. Time availability Actively managing a portfolio of individual stocks requires significant time investment in research, monitoring, and portfolio adjustments. 
NOBL is a more passive investment option. Risk Tolerance If you have a lower risk tolerance and are uncomfortable with the potential for significant losses in individual stocks, NOBL's diversification is beneficial. Investors with a higher risk tolerance might be willing to take on the additional risk for potentially higher rewards. Potential Strategies Poor Satellite Approach A common strategy involves using NOBL as a core holding for broad diversification and adding a few well-researched individual stocks as satellites to target specific growth opportunities. This balances diversification with the potential for outperformance. Robo-advisors, for investors seeking a balance between individual stock selection and convenience, robo-advisors can offer automated portfolio management services that combine ETFs with some individually selected stocks based on your risk profile and goals. Should I consider including a small-cap growth ETF alongside NOBL to diversify exposure across the growth spectrum? Yes, including a small-cap growth ETF alongside NOBL, iShares S&P 500 growth ETF, could be a good strategy to diversify your exposure across the growth spectrum. Here's a breakdown of the rationale and factors to consider. Benefits of Diversification Exposure to different growth stages, NOBL focuses on large-cap growth stocks, which are typically established companies with a history of solid growth. A small-cap growth ETF offers exposure to smaller, earlier-stage companies with the potential for high future growth but also higher risk. This diversification captures a broader range of growth opportunities within the market. Reduced Risk While both NOBL and a small-cap growth ETF focus on growth stocks, they represent different segments of the market with potentially uncorrelated returns. This diversification can help reduce the overall portfolio volatility. If large-cap growth falters, small-cap growth might still perform well, and vice versa, offering some level of portfolio protection. Things to Consider Higher volatility, small-cap stocks tend to be more volatile than large-cap stocks. A small-cap growth ETF will likely experience larger price swings, compared to NOBL. Be sure this aligns with your risk tolerance. Lower liquidity, small-cap stocks can be less liquid than large-cap stocks. This means a small-cap growth ETF might have lower trading volume and higher bid-ask spreads, potentially impacting your ability to enter or exit positions quickly. Correlation, during strong bull markets, both large-cap and small-cap growth stocks might experience significant gains reducing the diversification benefit. However, during market downturns, the correlation between these asset classes might increase, limiting the risk reduction effect. Choosing a small cap growth ETF Expense ratio Compare expense ratios of different small cap growth ETFs. Lower expense ratios lead to higher long-term returns. Investment strategy some small-cap growth ETFs focus on specific sectors or growth factors. Consider your investment goals and risk tolerance when choosing an ETF. Is NOBL suitable for long-term investment horizon given its focus on growth stocks? NOBL can be suitable for a long-term investment horizon given its focus on growth stocks, but there are some key factors to consider. Potential benefits for long-term investors Growth Potential Historically, growth stocks have delivered stronger returns compared to the overall market over the long term. NOBL offers exposure to companies with the potential for above-average earnings and sales growth, which can translate to significant capital appreciation over time. Compounding The power of compounding allows even moderate long-term growth to accumulate significantly over time. NOBL's reinvestment of dividends can further accelerate this growth. Potential drawbacks to consider Volatility Growth stocks tend to be more volatile than the broader market. NOBL's price can experience larger swings, which can be emotionally challenging for short-term investors. However, for long-term investors, 
these fluctuations become less relevant as the focus shifts to long-term growth trajectory. Valuation Risks Growth stocks often trade at a premium due to their future growth expectations. This can make them more susceptible to corrections if future earnings disappoint. A long-term perspective allows investors to ride out these potential corrections, as growth stocks have historically recovered and continued their upward trends. Economic downturns During economic downturns, growth stocks tend to underperform compared to value stocks or defensive assets. However, with a long-term horizon, investors can wait out these periods, as the growth potential of the companies within NOBL is expected to return over time. Overall Suitability for Long-Term Investors Focus on long-term growth. If your investment horizon is truly long-term, think five years or more, and OBL can be a suitable investment option. You can weather the short-term volatility and potentially benefit from the compounded growth of the underlying companies. Risk Tolerance Ensure you have a high enough risk tolerance to stomach the potential for significant price swings that can occur with growth stocks. Long-term focus helps manage emotional responses to short-term volatility. Portfolio Diversification Consider including NOBL as part of a diversified portfolio that also incorporates other asset classes like value stocks or bonds. This diversification can help mitigate the risks associated with growth stocks. Additional Tips for Long-Term Investors Dollar Cost Averaging Investing a fixed amount of money into NOBL at regular intervals can help average out the cost per share over time and reduce the impact of market volatility. Rebalancing Periodically rebalance your portfolio to maintain your desired asset allocation, potentially buying more NOBL if its weight falls due to market movements. Stay informed Keep yourself informed about the companies within NOBL and the overall market conditions. While short-term fluctuations shouldn't be a major concern, staying informed allows you to make informed decisions for your long-term investment strategy. All right, growth hunters, we've reached the end of the runway. So, is NOBL the right fit for you? The answer, like most things in investing, depends. NOBL offers a powerful engine for long-term growth, but it's not without turbulence. If you can stomach the volatility and have a long-term horizon, NOBL can be a champion in your portfolio. Remember, diversification is key. Consider pairing NOBL with other asset classes or even a small-cap growth ETF for a broader exposure. Ultimately, the best choice depends on your risk tolerance and investment goals. Do your research, consider your options, and never stop learning. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of NOBL. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth investment breakdowns. Hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. And in the comments below, let me know what other ETFs you'd like to see explored. We'll catch you on the next one.